um, I want I want to show. Uh, let me go ahead and create it something real quick. So, um, this is my barcode tool. Um, I want I want to show the the connection. So I totally forgot. I missed this note. Um, I want to let me add a couple tools here. Let me just add an object locate tool. Uh, use the zebra head here. Always a good object locate. Um, can't believe I almost missed these. I was having so much fun. Uh, so here's an object locate tool. Let me just add a uh, edge tool for fun. That's what we're finding in that chair. All right, so what I wanna do is just show the, uh, the connect features, right? So um, I show you capture, I showed you build, uh, here's connect, right? So the people when they're like, how do I send this data out, right? So uh, if I click on connect, Here's where you could do these sorts of things. So the first thing we ask is, okay, here's some save settings. Uh, how do you want to? How do you want to save images? Right. This is this is for saving images. Do I want to save failures? Do I want to save passes? Right. So um, right now you can save them on the device. Remember, there is 11 gigabytes worth of space on these devices. That is a lot. That's a lot of pictures you could save. Right. So I could save them on device. I could save them as JPEGs or bitmaps. I could give them a prefix. I could give them a time date stamp and I could say, Hey, I want, you know, what quality do I want them at? Right. So it's either, you know, different percentages there. I could also save them as FTP or SFTP, right? And this allows me to hook up to an external FTP server. Uh, FileZilla is very popular these days. Uh, you could use that and save and shoot these, these images off to the, to the network, if you will, right, for, for being saved and, and used. So those are a couple of different ways where you could set, hey, I want to save the past images or the failed images. I want to save those different pieces uh, there as, as we go. So very, uh, very hopefully intuitive and, and looks very, and just setting up any other communications to an FTP server uh, was there. And if you just want to save on the device, again, here's your, your bitmap JPEG, and here's your different quality levels. All right. So uh, one thing to note, uh, image storage is, is, isn't always the highest priority, right? So if you're doing a high-speed application, you want to capture lots of images, just like others out there in the market, that's a lower priority. Remember, the, the primary responsibility of these units are to read barcodes, read inspections, do inspections, and shoot data and decisions out, right? So if you're trying to do like a 600 feet per second barcode reading that never stops, you're not going to be able to keep up using the uh, the, the image storage devices. It's, it's, it's like that. Everybody's software, it's nothing unique uh, that we do. We, we try to give you as many as, as possible. We have some buffering and queuing in. However, it's just something to take a note of if you're starting to do some high-speed stuff, right? If you, if you want to just do a, a failed images or past images, you know, you, you, there's less frequency involved in those, and you should have no problem with those. Uh, the next tab down is industrial Ethernet, right? So you have data you could send in from the PLC and data you could send out to the PLC. So first, if I look at data coming in, uh, here's some barcode match string or no read string. So this would be information I'm reading in from the PLC, right? So if I'm doing a lot code or, or date code, again, this page is identical on, on the, the FS side. Um, if I want to say, hey, does this match you know, today's date? I could, I could send it over from the PLC, right? So I could say, oh, see, I'm, and then click this box, and then it'll, it'll, it'll import it from the PLC and use that in the match code uh, for that for that particular tool. I can also send a string. Like every time I don't read, I could send a, a string value out. This would be that string that you'd want to send out here in the input of that particular tool. All right, let me, uh, let me go show you the outputs because they're way more exciting. So each tool has a whole bunch of different outputs you could send out, right? So this is my barcode tool. I could send out the time, I could send out the data, I could send out you know, how many values were there, you know, all this sorts of information I could send out. If I click on object locate, you're gonna see that data changes, right? How many did I find, right? Well, right now you can only find one. Um, here is the, some of the scaling factor. Like what scale do I use? Well, it's 1.0. That's a lot of decimal places there, right? So you could send that out. Um, you could send out the, the location coordinates, the score, all these individual pieces of data for each, each of these individual tools you could add up and build into your sample, right? Here's an edge tool, right? Uh, what time it is, the success of it, how long it took. I mean, there's not much you could really send out on an edge tool but there's some data you could send there. There's also job specific pieces I could send out, right? Like what is the name of the job I was running? What, what was the result time? Don't want it to be a pass and fail. I want to send that data out in the string. All that information can be built in here 
and sent. On job specific things, if you're using an add-on instruction or, or similar things for the Siemens PLCs, there is a structure that's gonna have a lot of these job specific things built into the, the header of it already. So a job pass fail bit is one of those that are built into the header that you don't have to necessarily pass as a job specific. That would be additional information that you'd wanna pass about the particular job. Right. If I want to add something like this, I could just say, okay, give me the give me the X, Y, and angle. Right. You can see down here it builds what that 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 memory sample is. I think it can then copy that and then paste it into my PLC program to be able to quickly, you know, you know, sort through and, and parse those particular pieces of information out. So that's kind of how you send data out or get data out of the actual uh, device itself for the Ethernet IP. Uh, we also have GPIO mapping. Remember uh, on the first demonstration I did, you have different inputs and outputs you could you could set up. I don't have any currently set up for an output, but let me let me just do that real quick. I go to my GPIO and I'll say I'll make this uh, GPIO an output, and then it says finish this in the job builder connect GPIO mapping. So let me do that. When I come over here, you can see here it's the job result. I can say okay, give me the on GPIO two, give me the job result of pass. And that's going to, anytime it passes now, job, GPIO2 is going to turn high, right? And I can say, well, I want that to be high, not low, All right? So bam, there we go. Uh, I'm off and running, right? So if I want to do a fail condition, I can say, okay, well, on, um, on GPIO4, I want that to be an output. And I can come back over here and say, okay, well, I want this to be my fail result. I want that, I want that to be high when it, when it fails, right? So now I have my job pass fail done, just like that with using my GPIO. So pretty quick to do that. I also have this edit device settings. I could click on that and it takes me right back to that page, the same device settings page that I was showing you before. So it's another quick way to get around. Remember there's a bunch of different ways to do the same thing with those particular pieces. I guess this one I should have showed a long time ago. This was the save button, right? So you see this little disc here. If I click on it, it brings it up and I could save my job. It's kind of like a quick save opportunity. So I hit save and now that job saved. You can see when it's uh, gray, uh, light gray. It, uh, there's been no adjustments. Anytime I make a change, it'll turn bright white, uh, telling, alerting me that I should probably save it again. Mm -hmm.